this presentation, I'll be talking about how allele frequencies can change over time to genetic drift and what that would look like if we were accurately and closely tracking allele frequencies over time. Our case study here is we're talking about the evolution of lactose tolerance and how hypothetical genes for lactose tolerance would change over time. Evolution is any change in the frequency of alleles over time. So even though lactose tolerance, we know that there has been selection for ma in many populations for lactose tolerance, it doesn't mean that the genes that underlie this phenotype can't change due to other processes and other circumstances. So populations can evolve due to genetic drift, which is just random change over time due to random processes, who lives, who dies, who happens to marry whom and have children with whom. So the allele frequencies here, it's worthwhile to walk through how we're going to lay this out again. This is similar to the previous presentation. So we have 400 total individuals in our hypothetical population, two homozygous dominants, two homozygous, uh, excuse me, 200 homozygous dominants, 100 heterozygous, and 100 hetero homozygous recessive. We can extrapolate, extrapolate out from these genotype frequencies to a gene pool way of looking at things. So we let, we think about it this way, each individual contributes two alleles or two chromosomes or two gametes to the gene pool. Each individual is diploid, so 200 individuals have 400 chromosomes bearing the big L allele, so they contribute 400 big L alleles to the, um, to the gene pool. Go ahead and stop the presentation here. I, I challenge you to think about what the overall frequency of the big L and little l allele are. You should get very good at doing these calculations. Seriously, stop the presentation, do the math, make sure you can do it. So when I'm using the gene pool approach, I, I say I have 400 individuals, that's 800 total chromosomes or 800 total gametes in my gene pool, 500 divided by 800, 500 total big L alleles, 300 total little L alleles. I always add up, check my math as I go, make sure it adds up to one at the end. So we can start off with our allele relative frequencies. We can make a pie chart. It's a good way to visualize the relative frequencies of those alleles. And this is the frequency of alleles in our theoretical gene pool. We can also present it as bar graphs if we want. Now, over time, the frequencies of alleles in a gene pool can vary randomly over time due to genetic drift. And this is evolution. It's just as good a form of evolution as natural selection or any other. So I'll show you what we mean by this. So the graphs in this and uh, other presentations will have year along the bottom. Uh, we'll say that our, we're caring about a process of uh, about 800 years. And the y-axis here is the frequency of the L allele. We'll start out at point, uh, zero, excuse me, 0 0.625 over here. And I just randomly made up some data where the frequency of the allele is increasing over time here and I'm saying this is due to genetic drift so this could happen if it just so happens a bunch of people who are lactose tolerant also uh, marry and produce children uh, with other people who are lactose tolerant um, and it wasn't lactose tolerance had nothing to do with their marriage decision or their decision for the number of children to have or their survival of the children. It just randomly happened that the gene uh, was more common among people reproducing and having children. So the gene increases in frequency. And then maybe due to, to random chance, a bunch of people that are uh, uh, lactose intolerant, uh, maybe they have more offspring or maybe all the, the lactose tolerant people marry somebody who's lactose intolerant and they produce a bunch of heterozygotes and those heterozygotes then marry each other and produce a bunch of homozygous recessives. And regardless of how it happens due to random chance, no influence of selection or, or conscious choice, uh, the allele decreases 
over time due to random choices, random decisions. Maybe a bunch of people just so happens that a bunch of people who are lactose tolerant happen to get sick and not have offspring for a long period of time. And lactose tolerance had nothing to do with that happening. So the lactose tolerance gene would decrease over time. That's genetic drift. You'll see a bouncing around, a random bouncing around of the allele frequency. So increasing over time up to close over 0.75 decreases, goes up for a while, goes back down. It's less than 0.5 here. Um, the last little bit increases again and then tapers off. Perfectly consistent with just genetic drift bouncing the frequency of the allele around over time. A key thing about genetic drift is it's most pronounced in small populations. This is a very, very important thing to know about genetic drift. Genetic drift, the, the amount of change that's possible increases as population gets smaller. All populations are subject to genetic drift. The only exception to that is if the population is infinitely large. No population is infinitely large, so therefore all populations are subject to genetic drift. But the influences of genetic drift, the variability that occurs due to genetic drift is larger when you have small populations. Something that's important to know is that alleles can become fixed due to genetic drift. So let's imagine another scenario where for 200 years, the frequency of the allele increases for a while and then decreases just due to random reasons. For whatever reasons, the allele went up and then maybe a bunch of just randomly all the people who were lactose tolerant homozygous uh, died and didn't pass on their genes and so the frequency of the allele goes down and then it goes back up due to random processes and then it goes up and then it stops it reaches a frequency of one we call that fixation alleles can become fixed for many reasons due to natural selection due to genetic drift due to founder effects but um there's, uh, we often are interested in when natural selection can cause a gene go to, to fixation, but it can also just happen due to genetic drift. So anywhere the line here where the line is one and it stays one, it is considered fixed. One thing that's here, uh, you, it looks like the line touched uh, one momentarily here and then drifted back down. If you see this, uh, that means it was only temporarily fixed and something drove it away from one and then it fixed again could also just be a rounding error could be an immigrant came into the population and brought the uh the allele um the little l allele back could be a mutation brought it back but then we go back up to fixation so when uh, an allele is fixed, that means the frequency is one. So that means if we have 400 individuals that are in our population, 800 chromosomes in our gene pool, that means the frequency of big L is one and the frequency of little L, can't see it here on my screen, but it is zero. So your graph would look like this. Um, there's even a little color here that should be gotten away fixed. That should be taken away there. Fixed means gone.